Now, the final statement was to show God's purpose for every one of us. Sometimes we get distracted by other people's calling and lanes. And so the final thing he told Peter is, Peter, follow me. And when Peter, instead of following, Peter turned. There are many things that distract us from the main thing God has called us to do. Some of us, we are being distracted by other people's assignment. Some of us, we are being distracted by good things. Even Martha, it was a good thing that distracted him. He was cumbered, distracted by many servings. Sometimes you can be in this church, doing your work so well, that you even forget that this whole work is about souls. You can be so concerned about being a good husband, a good father, taking care of your family, that you may forget the other assignment, which is the real assignment of feeding God's sheep. So Peter was concerned about whether somebody was going to be more successful than him. And he said, what will this man do? And Jesus said, Peter, if I say that he should not be a matter, you be a matter. What is that to you? I've already told you how your death will glorify me. Dulane. The last word he left was, follow me. So it's actually, feed Tend, feed, follow, follow, actually. Clap. Now, my time is up. I've, I've ex exceeded my time a little bit. Now, following is extremely important. Feed the ship. Tend them, attend to them, provide leadership. Feed, but follow and follow. There are some people that stop following. And they themselves strayed. So I want us to finish with the words of Paul to the Ephesian pastors. Acts 20 from verse 17. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him he said unto them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia, after what manner I've been with you in all seasons. Uh -huh. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations that befell me by the lying in weight of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. See, he was feeding the sheep. But I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Uh-huh. Testifying both to Jews and to Gentiles, Jews to, to both, testifying both to Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, except that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me. Everywhere I go to, there's prophecy that I'll be beaten and I'll be imprisoned. But none of these things move me. Michael, let me hear you now. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. Uh -huh. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. 
Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you the counsel of God. I've fed you. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. You see, so you must take heed to yourself also first. And then to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you an overseer. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Ghost has made you an overseer over God's sheep. Even if it's one person you are taking care of, you are still a shepherd. And take it to yourself and to the sheep you are taking care of. To feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolf enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I've ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You commend the people to God's word because that is what is going to give them an inheritance. You teach the word. You feed them with the word of God. I've coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I was not distracted by money or anything. And you yourself know these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I work provided for myself and for people who were with me. I've showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. First Peter 5 2. First Peter 5 2. I want you to rise up. I've exceeded my time. It says what? We can start from verse 1. You elders, elders that talks about shepherds, okay? Which are among you, I exhort, who also am a shepherd and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Let's read it together. Michael, hold on. Let's read it together. One go. It says what? Now listen. Feed the flock. Take oversight. You see, feed, tend. Not of constraint, but willingly. Not of filthy look. Not because of money. But with a readiness, with a willing, willing heart. Uh huh. Next verse. Neither has been lords over God's heritage, but examples to the flock. That's leadership. All right. We can finish. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you receive a crown of glory that fit another way. Every, every one of us in this church is supposed to be a team leader, a shepherd, or a captain. Or, or, or an, an assistant pastor or a pastor. Everybody's supposed to win a soul and take care of your soul and make your soul also win souls. Amen? Okay. Let me see by hand, those of you who have a soul already, this year you have a soul that you, you have a soul that you are shepherding. Raise your hand very high. If you, if you have a soul that you are shepherding, raise your hand very high. All right. God bless you greatly. So the rest of us are going to do the same. We're going to win. It says there are other sheep that are not in the fold that we must bring in. Hallelujah. So it shall be one fold or one flock and then one shepherd. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Nyami osai. Nyami osai. 
Father, thank you as under shepherds. We know this is not by might, it's not by power, but we receive strength from the Holy Ghost. Every one of us to be good shepherds, to lay down our lives for the sheep. He said, if we love you, we should feed the sheep, we should tend the sheep, we should feed the sheep, and we should follow, and we should follow. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now. Now. All right. This is what we're going to do. I know our time is running. Uh, we're going to sing a song. Come and sing it for us. And then we're going to, please be seated. We're going to take our offerings with it. All right. Open the belts. Now, you're going to prepare an offering or you're going to get the offering you've prepared ready. Come up if you, if you, if you are a tither. If you are a tither, come up with your tithe and your first fruits and your vows. Pledges, thanksgiving, offering seeds. Come forward quickly. Anything you brought for the Lord, come forward and wave it to the Lord. Today I declare the Lord furnish you with every good thing. His divine power has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. We declare your vats overflow. Your bands overflow with plenty in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Take your offerings. I want you to always honor God, not merely give, okay? The Bible says, if you honor the Lord with your first fruits, with your substance, actually, and with the first fruit of your increase, your bands will be filled with plenty. Raise your hands. Today I declare that all grace is abounding toward you. That you always having sufficiency in all good things is abounding unto every good work. Now we rebuke the devourer for your sake. And we bless your habitation. In Jesus name. Amen.
Tell your neighbor, feed. Tend. Feed. Follow. Follow. Tell another person. Amen. This one, you can't forget. Uh -huh, you can't forget. Let's, let's appreciate that, Daddy. Amen. Daddy, thank you for simplifying it for us. So that's what we are going to do as a church. Please, if we have some of the um, pledge forms and um, partners forms, please. How many of us have filled our partners form or pledge form? Oh, everybody is doing it, but some have done it already. Okay, so please, those of you who have not done it, please raise your hand so that we can get it for you. Everybody is partnering with the church financially this year to make sure that we can feed at least 200 people every Sunday and bus 100 people. Yesterday, about 140 of us went to Ebri Gardens for, for some fun time. And they didn't say we are nice people, so the bus, we got a government bus, but still we had to pay 2,800 Ghana cities. We got private buses. We have to pay uh, 1,800 for two buses. So that should tell you a rough idea of the 100 uh, people bus. And, and we, we even budgeted for 1,005. I'm sure it will even have to go beyond that. Uh -huh. So please, let's all, if you can commit to just helping us with the bus, helping us with the fuel, helping us with the food, so that we can bus 100 people to church every Sunday and feed 200, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Isn't it not a good thing? It's a very good thing. So please, that's what we are doing. So if you have not filled your partner's form, please take one, fill it. If you want to give a one-time seed, the Lord will bless you. If you want to do that every month, every week, from as low as $50 a month to as high as $1 million, as God prospers you, you increase your giving. Amen. So we'll be doing that throughout the month of February till every member and everyone who fellowships with us will also have the opportunity to partner with us. Amen. Yes, we have some testimonies in the house, and I'm sure they'll still want to testify to the Lord. So please, everyone has three minutes. Let's keep it snappy because I still have to give you some few announcements before we close the service and have enough time for changeover. Let's receive Apostle Sidney and his team. Smiling, why? It's testimony time. Say it's testimony time. <laughs> Hallelujah. This morning we are doing it snappy, truly. Amen. You must feed the lamp, okay? You must tender them. You must follow and follow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first person, we have a sister here. Actually, that's one of our souls. Uh, we have tried tendering him and doing all the best. And she is not now anointed by grace. She's also doing the same. Hallelujah. So we are inviting Sister Maufemo with a hand clap. <laughs> Sister Maufemo. Hallelujah. Give a hand clap. It's testimony time. God bless you. Straight to your point. Hallelujah. I want to give God all the glory and honor this morning. <laughs> it's a privilege to be here. Daddy, I'm so grateful. God bless you for all the sacrifices for us. <laughs> um, so somewhere 2020, uh, 2022, December, um, we had uh, Days in Glory. And Daddy called out those that are trusting God for something big in the year 2023. So I came around, I was standing right here, and the personal word Daddy gave to me was that he saw somebody putting something in my hand, and he saw his money. Hallelujah. So that was in December, and then January, February, somehow I lost a part-time job that I was doing. In fact, when I received the word, I trusted God for it. I just told myself it was done. I, I don't remember praying for it. Then, March, I have to, I, I relocated. Um, then, in June, 
uh, on the 6th of June, it was a Tuesday early morning. By the grace of God, I woke up in my sound mind. In fact, about a week, I was just having more passion to pray. I pray in the morning, in the evening, at dawn. I took some prophetic acts. I was just anointing my house wherever I was. I don't know what was it, but I was just, I was just injured. So early morning, I woke up. I, was, I came out of my room and saw that people were all around us, and policemen, they were in uniform, a lot of people. So I came out just to hear that we had to pack out of the house without any notice, nothing. So I went out, everyone went out. And I had an assignment at work that morning. So I called a colleague to inform my people that I wouldn't be able to come. So I showed them what they are supposed to do. Then he was like, why wouldn't you tell your next manager you're in charge? I was reluctant, but I did. And all I remember asking him was, I need a place to pack my things. I need a place to pack my things. And afterwards, I have to get a place. So I called an agent who brought me. And we started looking for a place by faith. I didn't have anything in my pocket. I, I don't remember even having up to 500 Ghana cities. Hallelujah. So we went to look. And then I, I, we look and search. I didn't get the taste. So I was told that my things were outside. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Hallelujah. Okay, so that was it. Then the next time my manager called, it was, it was like an instance, an emergency meeting was held at the workplace and a check was released. Money was released that very day to take care of my accommodation. I'm here to glorify God for what he has done for me. No family member, no friend, nothing. But a check was released that very day for me to get accommodation. And by God's grace, neighbors came around. And in fact, people that I don't know, I was favored. I stayed in somebody's house that I've never met, I've not spoken to before. And that was it for the three weeks. And then even getting to the new place, it was by favor. And the icing on the cake was uh, six solid months I was fed of utility. I don't know how that happened. Ah. That's how God has been good to me. We thank God so much. And I want to thank the, the prophet of the house. In fact, for releasing that fund over six months before the incident, the money was released before the time. And other, other men of God actually confirm it. I had a friend who was so online, the person hasn't seen me before, also said the same thing. Another minister also said, this, you have a surprise waiting for you, and it was done. I want to thank God so much. I want to thank uh, my personal mentor here, who was always with me. In fact, right from the day I called him, the encouragement. He was also connecting me to other places. God richly bless you. Thank you. Thank and Pastor Gloria, always checking on me. Pastor um, Eunice, God richly bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Give a hand clap. Give a hand clap. Amen. So tender feet is your turn now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next person is actually one of our sisters, um, Auntie Ajoa, who is also a pastor and a supervisor from the arena, a student now. Uh, actually, I'm already from school, but she is now still in school. I've been tendering her to God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's an honor to stand before this distinguished audience to give my testimony. Daddy, thank you so much. Um, I believe that if we pass the microphone round, we can have a testimony service. Everybody has a testimony, right? Okay, so I got convicted last week. That is why I'm here. This testimony I'm giving today was supposed to have been given to an audience like this um, about six months ago. Last year, when I was on a journey, um, I hear it was one Sunday, it rained heavily in Accra, and we all know what happens when it rains in Accra, right? Flats everywhere. I don't know Damfa, but in the afternoon, 
Okay, so let me start it this way. I woke up in the morning with a song in my spirit. My voice is not as good as a glorious voice, Pastor Gloria's voice, but I'll try. It says, um, um, Fami si e ma drink wa, ko si se jai hu. And it was singing in my spirit the whole time. So when I was online during the service, I was just worshiping. It was on replay the whole time. And around two o'clock, I got a call from my husband. And it sounded like it was raining. And I was like, hey, now we're going. He says, oh, me call down I was like, ah, but it had rained in Accra heavily. What is so special about Danfa that you have to go through the flats to get to Danfa? He says, oh, I have to go and see a friend who's traveling tomorrow. I was like, okay. I was beginning to get anxious, but I got to check in my spirit to commit him into God's hands because I don't own him. The Holy Spirit owns him, right? So I said, Holy Spirit, take absolute control. And then he set off. Around 6 p.m., he called and said, I said, what is it? But I wasn't scared because I knew there was a sense of peace in the atmosphere. Whatever was happening, I didn't have control over it, but I knew the Holy Spirit was in charge. So he called and said, um, I hear there's a big stream in Danfa. It's a huge one that has a huge bridge over it, that cars pass over it. Where he was going to, he had to drive over the stream, the, the bridge. He uses a, a Ford truck. But for some reason, he decided to park be before the bridge and cross the bridge on foot. Luckily, there's a guy who was across the street who was directing him. So he was standing across the stream. He said he didn't know what happened. Just when he took his first few steps, he slipped into the stream. And this is huge. He's taller than Pastor Glavi. And he said when he fell into the stream, it was up to his eye level. For me, hearing that, I was like, okay, this thing could have been disastrous. And this was somebody who came out of the stream because somebody was standing across the stream to help him out. We know, you see, if we are giving this testimony in the UK or somewhere, it's different. But in Ghana, where we had May, June 3rd, where there was floods and people died, and in a stream as large as that, that has debris and all of that, what if, what if, the Lord delivered me from the series of what ifs. He came out of the stream. He protected all three phones of his, you know, men and their phones. <laughs> he protected the three phones. But he allowed the car key to go down the stream. So the Holy Spirit had rested the, the, the car there for four days. But I was at peace with my spirit because I felt like God does not make mistakes. If he packs your car for a while, it means he's delivering you from something that you have no idea of. Now, when I assess the whole situation, I just said, thank God. Then I remember that I had a dream that I spoke to mommy about. I had a dream about months earlier that I was, in, I was clad in black and I, was I went somewhere with mommy. And I, I looked so morose that it looked like the event was about me. And we know what black is associated with in Africa. So when I remember that dream, I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because if it hadn't been for you, I don't know what would have happened. You know, you preserved this guy and he doesn't even know what you are taking him out of. Now, this testimony is up here because just last week or last two weeks, I witnessed, I was actually online for a funeral of somebody very close to me. And I'm like, I see people connected and related to me sitting down clad in black. And I said, God, but this could have been me. But you didn't allow it. And I have an opportunity in church to give testimony. I won't hide it. I won't keep it to myself. So all I'm saying to you today is that if God has done something for you, be deliberate about it. Go through your day paying attention to the deliverances that he takes you out of. Pay attention to the things he brings your way and do not keep it to yourself. By sharing it with people, you are tendering the sheep. People will listen to your testimony and they will be encouraged. Holy Spirit, I give you all the glory and praise for delivering Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Clap, 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 clap. Pastor Joa, clap, 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 clap. That's a powerful testimony. We are waiting for yours. Next week, come yourself and share it and tender people. God bless you. Let's appreciate them. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Yes, so we have to be ending the service any moment from now, but just some key announcements. So um, we'll have our third service, all right. We'll have our fourth service, but tonight 
because of our relationship seminar, we are not having our evening service. We are having a family movie night. Amen. So 6 p.m. we'll be here to watch a beautiful movie as a family. And there'll be popcorn and sausage and everything. So let's come and have that time. Amen. This is the second day of our uh, relationship seminar. Yesterday, as I said, we went to a big gardens. Over 140 of us. It was awesome. And if you miss, you missed. So wait for the next one. But tonight, we can all meet together. Tomorrow evening, we we'll, at 6 p.m., we'll have a, uh, a play um, directed by Pastor Anita. Uh, Jesus is coming. Amen. And they will have a panel discussion uh, on parenting to be led by uh, Daddy and Mommy Cropfit. Amen. And then the Tuesday, we are going to have um, um, a panel discussion on relationship, all aspects of relationship, courtship, marriage, and all that. Um, you don't want to miss out on that one. We'll answer your, all your questions because that's the only item for that day. And then Wednesday, tell anybody about Wednesday. Amen. Wednesday, vows day, we are spending it in the house of God. Amen. So 6 p.m., we are going to have a dinner, um, dinner and jazz, and then chocolate with love. Amen. So it promises to be awesome. Come with your Valentine. Amen. If you don't have one, come and borrow me. I'm available. So, so we'll all be here to wine and dine as family. And it promises to be awesome. So please don't take yourself out. This is one of our major programs for February, and it is designed just for you. Um, our Wonder Night is also a major program. It was supposed to be in February, but we pushed it to the 1st of March so that we can have adequate time to prepare. It's our Year of Wonders, and one of our flagship programs is Wonder Night. It's all night, so 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. on 1st March we are going to be here, and the prophet will be in his element. Amen. It's a whirlwind of wonders, and we've started the publicity, so let's prepare ourselves and anticipate. And in the same March and April, we are having our first Glory Light Bible School. If you want a good Bible school, sound in doctrine, and full of the Holy Spirit, it is Glory Life. Just register, and then enroll. Amen. And all the other uh, key announcements will be posted on the notice. Thank you so much for coming to church. Uh, let's redeem our pledges and our partnership, and then um, let's be here tonight for our movie night and climax our uh, um, relationship seminar on Wednesday with our dinner. Amen. The Lord bless you. Okay. So we can be on our feet and close the service. So you can see we are giving you 15 minutes, Claire. Tell your neighbor, make a new friend. Anybody who says church people are some way, it is they who are some way. So if you can't find a friend here, then you are some way. So make a friend, get a disciple, get a date for Wednesday, and let's do church. Amen. Just hold the hand of your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, feed, tend, feed, follow, follow. Amen. Lift to the other hand. Let me pray. Holy Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us that we have to lay down our lives one for another and we have to feed your people with, the, with the, the word and also feed them with the physical needs and tend for them, lead them, attend to them and follow you without getting distracted. I pray that each and everyone here who has listened to this word will not forget. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision but in Agrippa, I gave attendance to that word. And he became one of the greatest human beings ever. Father, as we follow you, as we become disciples, and as we disciple others, Father, let us receive the crowns of glory. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, and may he give you his peace. His peace that passeth all understanding, his joy unspeakable. Be your portion both now and forever. And may you be the next person testifying of God's goodness and of his greatness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord bless you. Can we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Tell your neighbor, see you tonight. See you tonight. <laughs> okay, the love bless you.